All right, welcome everybody to the iBug Android Insight Call. Today is Wednesday, October 20th, 2021. This is all about Android. We discuss everything, it's an open forum, so we discuss everything on the Android platform, whether it's the smartphone, the Fire tablet, Galaxy tablet, any Android tablet, uh, all Alexa devices, Google devices, um, and ooh, anything that runs on the Android platform that you have a question about, we're here to support each other. So um, just a little bit of housekeeping right now. Just know that all the calls are being recorded. And if you want to go back to previous calls or even to listen to this one over again, you will go to ibugtoday.org and go to the iBug Android tab and you will find all of our past and present recordings there. You will also find us on YouTube as well. Um, as well as just remember that as I said, this call is being recorded. So we just ask that you respect each other. If you have a question, we do not raise hands. We just ask that you wait till there's a lull in the conversation. Say your name. Wait till one of the, one of us um, recognize you, whether it's myself, Ava, or my co-facilitator, Hershey. Um, we are here to help facilitate the conversation, to help get ideas out there. We're here to help each other. So just know that... Um, if you need to mute yourself to control background noise, it's Alt-A if you're on the Windows computer. If you're on a Mac, it's Command-Shift-A. If you're on your um, phone, it's usually in the bottom left corner, I believe, where the mute button is. And that's all, oh, if, you, if you're on the, if you're on a phone call, it's star six to mute and unmute yourself, okay? Um, we have, iBug has a lot that's events going on during the month. Um, so if you wanna know, stay up to date with what the current events are for iBug, you can go to iBugToday.org where there is a list of the events up for the month. You know, we're the call every third Wednesday of the month. They have the iBug Buzz. There's the iBug Cafe. There is Trekkie Talk. Um, coming up this Friday is the movie, the iBug movie. It starts at 7.30 to log in. And it's the same link that you join on for, for our call here. And it's the Lincoln. Oh, darn. I just had it. I think I would divert to Sandia for the movie. <laughs> the Lincoln Lawyer. There you go. Yeah. The Lincoln Lawyer. Yeah. So just know, is there any other events? I know the Vila Book Club is coming up in November 11th. Yep. And that one we're going to be watching or watching, reading the Where the Crawdads Sing. That's a really popular book. And so, yeah, get ready for that one. And, uh, and uh, that's what's going on. Yeah, and I got to admit, I read Where the Car Dad Sings, so that is a very good book to get into because it really gets you how it really ends. Um, that's all of the events coming up. Like I said, go to ibugtoday.org and you can stay up to date on the events and everything that iBug is doing. Um, I also want to throw out there because we are being hosted with the ACB community. So we want to do a shout out and thank you for them. And I believe that's all of my up to dates and housekeeping. And so I know my co-host is on as well. So I will let him introduce himself. Okay, did I lose my co-host? 
I think you muted everybody. So Hershey, you have to unmute. It's there. Hmm. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay. All right, so good evening, and uh, I'm Hershey. I'm from Central Florida. And uh, for a bit of background about myself, uh, as far as phones that I use, I use a Note 9, which is using Voice Assistant Screen Reader, and a Pixel 4 XL, which is currently running Android 12. And uh, I... My journey, as far as Android is concerned, has been from just trial and error. I am low vision, so I do bring a little bit of information and insight on a low vision perspective to, to the Android uh, table. And Ava, I would say, is really good with her Amazon devices since she has tons of them. But one thing I do want to remind everybody during the show, if we could refrain from using the A lady's name, we could call her A lady or A L X E A. Um, just for the sheer fact that we don't want everybody's speakers to go off. And even if you name it uh, Ziggy Marley, <clears throat> you might want to watch out for that. And uh, as far as uh, what we're going to discuss tonight, we're leaving it to you guys to kind of gauge the conversation as far as it's a community call. If you have questions, concerns, I know there's been a lot on the table. Uh, yesterday was Apple Day. Today or day before was Apple, then Google, and then Samsung. Um, obviously, different products, different devices, and things. But accessibility at the end of the day means uh, the same thing in every language. No matter you know if you speak in Hindi or English or whatever, we want to be included in in the uh, product build up or ex you know be able to use the product to get to places. Uh, last month, I experienced uh, you know issues with Uber and. Luckily, today I'm on time. Everything is going well. And with technologies, uh, we have different operating systems that we always have to worry about. So uh, Android 12 is officially out. It was out on AOSP, which just basically means that if, you have, uh, if you're have, if you a developer, you had Android 12 fully out that way. But now the manufacturers such as Google Pixel uh, and other vendors have picked it up. I don't have numbers for you for other vendors pertaining to um, OnePlus or Motorola, if when and how they're going to release Motor uh, Android 12. But there's that. The ones that are uh, using older devices, like myself, don't have to worry. Um, Android 10 is still there. Security updates might be a little bit less, but they aren't bad. And that's one thing to keep up to date, uh, just for the sheer fact of security. Um, you could, you know... You might run into situations where updates do break stuff. Uh, I was on a Monday buzz call, and there's a lot of 14.8 uh, and 15.0 or whatever, 15.2. There's a lot of issues in that world. And again, if we don't talk to these companies and know how to approach them, we are never going to know how to uh, explain to them how to fix a problem. So one resource I'm going to share tonight, uh, if you go to our ibugtoday.com website, at the bottom, you'll find a section there which has a written letter, which you could follow if you would like to, just to have a conversation with developers to, to fix a problem, not to yell at the developer because you got to remember, it's a human, it's not a machine, it's not a robot, it has feelings. So, you know, as we are going to conduct the call tonight, uh, just make sure you're respectful to our individual uh, humans uh, and we are all humans, even though it's an Android Insight call. Uh, we control what we say, how we say, and what we do. So um, to refrain that, just if, you know, wait for the acknowledgement. And how we like to start off the show typically is by giving each person a chance to, uh, you know, give a little background about themselves and. Just a quick, quick, short hello. And so, if you could state your name, uh, where you're from. Um, some people like to state if they have Android devices, so maybe we could uh, gear towards specific questions. It, it helps drive uh, questions or drive questions forward. And uh, Ava, do you have anything? Uh, how about uh, uh, something new you have? How about that? How about that being the little uh, antidotal uh, thing? Something <laughs> new. Mm, right now, 
Mm, I'm so. just really setting up all my devices. So I'm having fun with watching uh, instead of having to individually set up stuff. Once I plug it in, like all my uh, Echo Dots, that they're automatically setting up without having to go through a lot of the steps. So, huh. but uh, well, yeah. I'll let you. I'll let you share what you share with with our good folks. But mm -hmm. that sounds confusing. But <laughs> I think I, th I think it you is, know what but, you're doing. Yeah, but it, it, it's a new step I've I've seen and that has developed. So, but I want to open up the floor for everybody yep. to introduce themselves. Let us know, as Hershey said, who you are. You know where you're from, and then if you have Echo devices or a smartphone. You know what are you using or what are you on? Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the floor. Hello. My name is Cynthia Gibbs Pratt. I am from New York City. However, I moved to Pennsylvania three years ago. I am legally blind with macular degeneration and have been so for the last 10 plus years. I started out with the Android uh, Galaxy S8, uh, S4, and now I have the S8 Plus and an S9. So awesome. I'm actually on the call so I can learn more about the features that I don't use, especially for accessibility since I'm always trying to use what vision I have left to see instead of hear. And as I was told, I can see but for so far, but I can hear forever. So I'm Definitely. learning voice over on my iPad, which I was given for one of my advocating groups here in Pennsylvania. And I'm learning <laughs> voice assistance on my Android, my Galaxy S8 Plus. And I just recently started like maybe a month ago on this really confusing I'm, I'm, I've learned a lot and, and, I, and I thank God I can hear it because the swiping part is the hardest part for me. So I constantly turn it off and on. Well, and appreciate that, Cynthia. Appreciate it. Thank and you. Uh, again, so Cynthia to us is new. So we were talking to her before the show started. So, you know, if you're new or anything, again, just give us a little bit about yourself and, you know, where you're from. And just uh, if you just want to make it a little quicker so we could kind of go around, around Robin and then um, if you do, if you are new, in fact, like Ms. Cynthia is, uh, please let us know so that we could at least let you know what uh, other services possibly that iBug might have to offer, as you mentioned, uh, your iPad and other devices. Okay, next. Uh, this is Steve Longmire. I'm from Decatur, Georgia. I enjoy getting on these Android, uh, uh, Android calls. I have a variety of devices i have a couple of those a devices in the house we have two of them uh, my phone is a as a motorola stylus 2021 and that's funny because yesterday they announced that i'm i can finally upgrade to android 11. Uh, i also have a pc a mac and an ipad and the good news i want to just say real quickly i'm a developer and I just published my first app, which is now in the app, well, now in Google Play, and it's called GCB Link. It is the official mobile app for Georgia Council of the Blind. I'm still working on the IIS, iOS version. That, that's, a, that's another story right there. So if you guys get a chance to check it out, it's GCB Link is the app name. Okay. Thank you. Yes, next. I can call names. This is Sandia. All right, Sandia. From Houston. Uh, so I have A devices everywhere. They're all over. <laughs> uh, and I have a Pixel 4 or 5, whatever Hershey says I have. Uh, I forgot. Uh, Pixel 5. Five. Okay. Yeah. What he said. And I'm primarily an iPhone user, but I am trying. So that's what I have. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. We love you. Next. Love you. Guest too. vice principal. <laughs> huh, it's Hello, this is, uh, <laughs> Hello, this is Foster from Houston, Texas. Um, like Steve, I have a number of devices, 
but uh, what I've been using a lot lately is my Google TV with Chromecast. That Interesting. thing works great. And Interesting. Um, with my subscription to YouTube TV, it thing is awesome. So that's my favorite Android device at this time. <laughs> awesome. All right. Next. This is Shree. Hello, um, I'm Shree. Virginia, and I have 11A devices and other Android devices around the house, but mostly an iOS user. Okay. Thank you. All right, next. This is Sandhya. Yes, Sandhya. Just going to remind people, so you can just say your name and then wait till we recognize because we don't, some people are raising their hands, just oh, letting okay. you know, you don't have to raise your hand. I think yeah. I saw a few people. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Sandhya. I think I knew who it was. <laughs> yep, we may have to call them out. <laughs> okay. Hi, this is Warren. Uh, could you guys hear me? Yes, you yeah. can. Okay, because I've been trying for a while. <laughs> anyway, so I'm here in the state of Washington, and um, I'm from Blind Android Users. This is my second time of appearing on you guys' um, great show, and thank you so much. I am the Android evangelist, so I'm not going to even uh, start detailing as to how many Android devices I have. <laughs> I just have too many. Excellent. <laughs> Now, so you can never have too many Android devices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next. Okay. So then <laughs> we'll just open up the floor for everyone to, if you have a question, comment. Hershey. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I just wanted to kind of bring up that there are some new devices, but um, I heard Warren's name right now. So uh, I'll pass the mic back to Warren. Oh, I was just going to ask the girl from New Jersey. I think she was from New Jersey um, talking about her Galaxy S8 Plus. And um, so you have a little bit of uh, usable vision, and so you kind of tend to pre uh, uh, prefer, rather, um, to not use TalkBack. Is that what I, I understand you are saying, or uh, you're just beginning to learn how to use your voice assistant? I'm actually from New York. And okay. yes, um, I, I've learned how to make the, some of the text larger. But when people sending me text messages and stuff like that and emails, it's harder for me to read it. So voice assistance helps a great deal. Ah, okay. I think I, I understand it better now. So a combination of the two, uh, both with the magnification and uh, with the uh, voice assistant together, it makes it a little bit better for you. Do you tend it to use the, it a lot better. Mm -hmm. the select to speak a lot? Because um, we have that, especially for those of you that still have usable vision, I think select to speak probably may be the one you might be using the most. This is Hershey. Hey, uh, I just wanted to, I think, clarify here uh, for your warrant. I believe what you might be considering and might be confused by the, the terms, which happens so often than not is voice assistant, right? Um, voice assistant is, I think, the Samsung screen reader she might be referring to. So yeah. the only drawback, and I have the Note 9 I've found, is it eliminates the two-finger double-tap play pause on Android 10 or anything below Android 11. So I still feel that voice assistant is a better screen reader meant for anything older than Android 10 that can use it, at least if it's a Samsung phone. 
Um, whereas Talkback, Talkback has all the cool like you know features that are out, but the double tap for playing and pausing audio is not available. Um, and I think there's one more section in there where turning off, I think speech, I think turning off and on speech is available now on the new talkback with using Android 10, but I still cannot use double tap to play pause media or and maybe answering calls, but not to play pause media. Yeah, but what I was talking about though, the select to speak, um, where, you know, you touch a particular uh, screen and mm -hmm. that particular screen gets magnified for you to use without speech. Very true. Um, yeah, select to speak as what Warren is uh, ref uh, referring to basically is you touch the screen and it speaks it obviously, but it's meant mainly for spot reading. So if you're low vision, you might have an article on online and you might just touch that art. Your, your select to speak is uh, set up in your shortcut in the way you use it. And then you, I believe you just tap on a particular part of the screen and it should read anything that's available as far as text on that part of the screen. Yeah, because I thought that probably might work better for her in that email situation. This is false. Is that an app? No, it's, it's built into the... Um, I'm not sure if the assistant has it, voice assistant has it or not, but I know... Um, Actually, it's an accessibility um, feature. It, it doesn't matter whether you have um, voice assistant or talk back. And just not to interrupt you there, Warren, you're correct. It is part of, in fact, Android Accessibility Suite, which if you type that into your Play Store, Android Accessibility Suite, um, that is what we're referring to possibly right now as TalkBack. So TalkBack is part of that service. Um, so is Select to Speak. So is Voice Access, I believe now, and uh, Switch Access. Switch Access could be for someone that might have uh, issues with mobility, so they use switches to move about. Um, Select to Speak again for the low vision tool, and then Talkback is a screen reader. But for your older devices using Android 10, I would not recommend Talkback. But it's okay to learn or turn it on and have a look, you know, just to familiarize yourself. But anything uh, in the future that you do by Android related definitely will be using TalkBack. So that's anything that's going to have Android 11, like the stylo Steve mentioned, or um, uh, Android 12, as just came out on the Pixel devices. Yeah, this and, is uh, Foster. Foster. Go ahead, Foster. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um... I, I um, well, well, when I was using my OnePlus, I I would use Select to Speak a lot, uh, especially for text messages, because um, when you get a lot of text messages, and you you can set the Select to Speak icon up to be at the bottom of the screen, because you can you can customize your Android to either use all gestures or you can set it up where you still have the back, the home, the task manager button at the bottom. And then if you set up the accessibility shortcut, you can set select to speak as your, your um, accessibility shortcut. And it puts like a little, almost like a little stick figure person in the corner. And then when you're ready to read a, te a text message, you click on that then click on the message and um, it'll start reading the message and you can pause it and, you know, pause and play the message. Thanks for that. And um, if there's more questions, concerns, uh, please keep them coming. Can you hear me? This is Steve. Yes, we can. Yeah, uh, I got a question. If um, I was listening to the young lady that has a, a Samsung S8 Plus, that was a older, that was a phone I previously owned, and now I have this Motorola Stylus 2021, and uh, it's a good phone. But one of the things I miss, I know with the the uh, Samsung, I don't know if this is just something that's 
unique to the Samsung, I was able to use both TalkBack and um, the reverse video at the same time and switch back and forth with the reverse video with using the uh, accessibility shortcut. I, I can't remember what those keys were, but but with this phone I have here with Android 10, I can't do that. Uh, my question is, if I go to Android 11, will it allow me to switch, you know, be able to switch back and forth between reverse video and back and forth with that? Would anybody be able to help Steve out with that? Uh, Hi, Steve Warren here. Now, when yes. you talk about reverse video, are you trying to talk about uh, the inversion of um, of colors, or are you talking about? I I'm not sure what you mean by reverse. Oh, reverse video. reverse colors. You know, just having. Okay. All right. That that makes sense. Okay. Now, so here here's the cool thing uh, with Android 11 or even Android 10. And uh, I'm sure you can still do that with your Motorola um, stylus. The um, you should be able to in accessibility settings. There's something in there called accessibility shortcuts, and you can choose. Um, you can enable that accessibility shortcut, and you can choose what accessibility services it is that you would like to have uh, available to you. Uh, just from within a gesture so that when you launch that accessibility um, shortcuts, then those two items or three items uh, would pop up and you'll choose the one you want. And so I think you should try that with your Motorola. I'm sure that your motor will have it because it's a stock Android device and it follows closely to what Google does. And uh, you should absolutely have it because I know I have it on my Pixel. I said like, oh, maybe three accessibility services. Uh, I, I got my talk back. I got um, BRLTTY. And I also have uh, the Braille back in there because sometimes my Braille back uh, crashes. And so the easiest way to bring it up is to invoke that accessibility shortcut. And you should be able to use that with uh, either magnification or color inversion as well as part of the accessibility stuff. Okay, is there any changes with Android 11? Android 11 has a lot of changes uh, compared to Android 10. However, so many things are similar. If there's anything that Android 11 uh, brings to the table is the fact that you have more uh, granular uh, control um, and that has to do with permissions mainly and that carries on to Android 12, which is a whole lot better. Uh, but the core experience is not gonna change any some. It's just basically it's the same thing that you're used to, just that there are some things that got rearranged. And especially when you go to your system settings, uh, things that you used to know to be in your apps and notifications may be grouped together with a different, um, in a different group. That's, those are the only okay. changes, yeah. Okay. So I can feel safe in doing the upgrade. Oh, yeah. Are you sure? You absolutely <laughs> okay. should. It's finally, it yeah, finally ask, showed up ask, yesterday. Ask Harshid. Yeah, you should. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, any other questions, concerns? Okay, this is to all of you guys that probably are not quite on Android yet, or maybe just dipping your toes in there, trying to test the waters and see how it is. Uh, what is your main concern that you have when you hear the A word, the Android word, that something there probably scares you? What's your main concern that you're not so quite sure about, uh, especially with Android? Because I know um, Android doesn't have a nice tune. Um, <laughs> Among our blind communities, uh, it's not promoted well. So for you guys, I, I just kind of, I'm curious to know as to what some of these things that are your fears or concerns uh, with Android. Well, if I could actually ask Sunday to answer that question first. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> that that would be a that would be a true statement to what Android is because I appreciate the question because that's what we're trying to do with with what Android Insight is is you know cover the differences between what Apple and Android bring but then what's really why are so many people afraid when you could still do the same things with Android right Exactly This is Steve again. Have any of you guys experienced or know anything about the Pixel 6 that just came out? Uh, thanks for that, Steve. We'll talk about it here shortly, but let's uh, continue on with the question that uh, Warren had, if, if you okay. have any insight right. on Warren's question. This is Shree. Go ahead, Shree. So I'll just give you my experience. Um, you know, I was an Android user when I was, you know, when I had sight. And when I was losing my sight, um, my organization in Virginia steered me towards Apple. Um, they said, you know, blind users mostly use Apple and thus you're better off using Apple. And so, um, you know, I had to kind of switch from that. And then I think the problem that I have now is I've got so many other devices that are tied to my Apple. It's very difficult for me to switch over to something else just because I'm just, you know, so well and tied to, you know, the watch, the iPad, the iPhone, the Mac, they're all just kind of, they're, they're all like brothers and sisters, you know, they're, they're just get along really well. And I think that's my fear is going to an Android is um, I'm going to lose that, um, the family of devices talking to each other. That's a genuine con concern because I, I totally feel you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't uh, either because you have everything invested in that um, uh, ecosystem. And it would be, it's like me saying, hey, you, I want to switch to Apple. I, I just could not see me doing that. And most especially uh, because of these reasons that you've talked about. I mean, everything in my house uh, is googly stuff, you know, um, from the home speakers to my thermostats and, and everything else. It's all googly stuff. So I, I just could not uh, see me uh, switching. So I, I totally understand uh, where you're coming from. The unfortunate part, however, if I could say it that way, is the fact that most oftentimes some of our great people in the blindness community, leaders and, and places like that, don't expose our blind people to the several options out there. And we wind up pushing just one thing and... I happen to be one of those that I go against that rule and I work with school districts out here and we butt heads all the time because uh, where they want to push iOS only, I refuse to do that. I want to expose everything to the kids and let the kids uh, choose what is best for them. This is Shree. Go ahead, Shree. Yeah, I think that's, um, and I'm not exactly sure why you know, my DBBI in Virginia, you know, steer us towards that direction. Because at that point, you know, I could have gone either way because I, I wasn't really tied to something. But the fact that they told me, you know, the blind community uses the iOS device more than they use the Android device. And that's what kind of said, oh, okay, well, you know, I don't know anything, but if you're telling me that's the direction I need to go, that's the direction I would go. So I think you, there's also that aspect of, at least for me, uh, you know, that there was a push from a, the state that runs accessibility services for telling us to go to an iOS device. And that totally makes sense, Warren, here again. It makes sense because, and I, I'm, I'm speaking from my experience with my colleagues, and the problem is usually these people do not know the other side. And so you want to push Android, and you don't know how to teach Android, how are you going to manage it? So th that's one part, very important um, key uh, player here. And, and that's what it is. And also the fact that uh, iOS has the uh, accessibility first, even though in reality they came out accessible at the same time in two, 2009, or well, I think maybe iOS 2008. I remember my first, I had to use iTunes to enable accessibility uh, back then. Now on Android, we didn't have any accessibility till 2009. 
And so we we were kind of behind there. And of course, Apple did things a, a whole lot better. And that's also part of it. So a lot of blind people just didn't care to learn Android. And so all the trainers and stuff like that didn't learn Android. And so I will not be asking you to use Android when I myself do not really know how to use Android. That's part of the problem. Thank you for that, Warren. And this is Hershey. And I, to, to second that, I think that is typically the issue. It's the situational putting your, you know, putting your feet in someone else's shoes, so to speak. And granted, you know, there's so many technological advancements, but at the end of the day, do those technological advancements mean that you get products that are suitable for, for the end user that are in the blind or visually impaired community. Um, and, you know, as, as this conversation is continuing, and I like that we're having this conversation specifically between what's making you afraid. Um, Oren and I had spoke off air earlier, and I had mentioned to him where I started from, and I told him, I literally said, I feel like I'd rather be a ghost in this situation because it's not about that I despise or dislike an iOS user or, or iOS or an Android device, but your thoughts stay to yourself and it whatever helps me today is helping me today, but it may not work out for the same uh, for another person. And I know one habit that was kind of tossed around in there in a bad way was uh, the Ira app providing uh, Samsung J7 phones. And honestly, what's really made me scared is that, is Android gets sometimes sucked into, hey, Android is cheap, we could sell you a cheap phone, but then you as the end user do not get your accessibility tools that you once thought, and then becomes this fragmentation of, well, the Samsung S8 had this at this point, and then this other device had this at another point, and the end user by, the, by that point is going to listen to a DBS or whoever counselor and say, well, iPhone, because that's simpler to remember than saying, well, I would recommend, I, Harshid, Hirsch, recommend Samsung and Pixel devices just because of upgradability or uh, uh, support for three years for the operating system or five years for security, which kind of leads me to this Google talk with the Google 6 and the 6 Pro. Uh, Steve, the cost for that phone is going to be $599 and $699, respectfully, or actually $899, excuse me. So, you know, if you go with a larger storage, like a 512 <clears throat> on a Pixel 6 Pro, $1,100. Is it worth it? Maybe, maybe not. But uh, since uh, Warren was gracious enough to, to stop by here, and if anybody else has any other information from your learnings, uh, uh, if you want to let Steve know about what's uh, what's this Pixel 6 guy all about, or a girl. So the Pixel 6, um, I happen to be one of those uh, knuckleheads that pre-ordered uh, the Pixel 6 Pro. Now, I wanted to get the 512. The Google servers were simply crashing yesterday. I could not. And I was really absolutely uh, pissed off. Excuse my Espanol there. I... <laughs> I was absolutely annoyed because I wanted so bad to get the 512 gig version. Um, and of course, it just, every time I try to add it to the card, it'll just give me a 504 error. And I'll go back, refresh the page. And, you know, I did that for over an hour. At the long run of the story, at uh, the end of the story, not even the 256 was available. I wound up picking up a measly uh, 128 gig that was the only one that was left and so my plan is that when it gets here um, at the end of the month thereabouts I'll, un I'll unbox it for our podcast and I'll send that baby back home to mama and see if I could get a bigger one because probably there'll be a restock of the bigger stories that I'm after but it's a new thing it's absolutely we're excited about it and I can wait to uh, do a review of it uh, Warren, that kind of brings me up to an interesting point I want to ask you, if you don't mind. So you said uh, the podcast. Um, uh, where, what is this podcast you talk about with, you, that you're affiliated with, but um, at the same token, um, 
could you also uh, give your expertise on our list, if you wouldn't mind, and maybe we could connect the different folks? I mean, at the end of the day, we're all, again, we're human, and uh, there's too many lists and things to keep up with. So would you mind possibly adding yourself to our list? And that is at iBug uh, Android Insight plus subscribe at groups.io. Um, that is I B U G Android A N D R O I D Insight I N S I G H T plus the plus sign subscribe S U B S C R I B E at groups.io G R O U P S dot I O. And uh, yeah, so Warren, if you could, uh, you know, let me know and maybe uh, as soon as you get it in your hands, uh, we'll have many more uh, heads to, to come flock over and watch it. It's a very good idea. And so what we will do is we're going to link you guys to our website um, under our friends uh, head uh, heading, uh, you know, some of these uh, sites that we consider our friends. Because you guys, like you said, um, Hash, we're doing the same thing. And it always excites me when I see another group doing something similar to what we're doing. And we are reaching out to blind people. And so my passion is about my fellow blind uh, sisters and brothers, regardless of where they may be. And so whatever venue that we're reaching those people through, to me, it's a beautiful thing. So we will have our webmaster add you guys to our website and um, you know refer people to you. Because um, it, it all depends on what one's one. You know, um, sometimes, some things are easier, you know, on a, on a different side than the other side. And so it's a good idea to have you guys there uh, networked with us. So I'll Definitely. be happy to do that. Definitely. Thank you so well, much. Thank, th I didn't uh, even thank think you, Warren. Like, well, like I said, we're all human, but I think what Android Insight for me has brought, and I've been here a year and a few months now, and that's the fact that I could just openly say, well, this is how you fix this, or this is where... I go to buy this product or I like the S9 or Note 9 because of X, Y, Z. And no one's going to say, well, go use an iPhone, right? So your your, <laughs> your words are safe with, with, with whatever thoughts you have. You can put it down on a table. Uh, Shri definitely uh, has great points in his ways of asking questions. And, uh, you know, we're talking about apps like NaviLens and stuff like that. So even on our cafe shows on the weekends, um, if we could even partner up to do a segment on let's bring Android users, you know, and versus uh, people that use iOS and let's conquer tasks rather than fight against each other. What's better? Why not take both and then set up maybe a task list and like a scavenger hunt or something fun on a weekend and maybe, you know, something could come about. And again, this is a community call. So that's why I get to say whatever's on my mind. So what's on everybody else's mind? This is Foster. Go ahead, Foster. And uh, um, and one of the things that uh, I think I think somebody might have mentioned it earlier, but one of the main I think you did, Hershey. The main thing to remember about Android is that it's open source. So there are so many manufacturers that um, use Android as the base, and they use they 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 um, how, how do you, they style the phone for the purpose that, that they that they want to push. So, for example, there are Android phones that are specifically for gaming. There are Android phones that are specifically for, or more so for taking pictures. So everybody kind of customizes Android in the way that they want the phone to be, to say, appeal to a, a specific demographic. From, from um, being on Android Insight, attend, you know, attending these um, open, open forums, and from my studies of uh, just dealing with um, Android, uh, you know, Samsung seems to be like, you know, it's at it's the pinnacle of Android as far as uh, and then and Samsung and Google and the Google Pixel products. Those are the best products you can get, especially when it comes to accessibility. So you have to really be careful which Android device you. Um, choose, especially when you're considering uh, 
assess you know accessibility because sometimes they may each each uh, manufacturer might tweak the um, operating system whereas um, Motorola, Google Pixel, um, any Nokia Android phone that says Android One on it, or any phone that says Android One, is going to pretty much be stock Android. So you just have to be cautious as to which which um, device you purchase. And this is Shree. Go ahead, Shree. So that's a very good point that was just mentioned because I think maybe that's why the phone because are they scratching their head to say well you should get a samsung well you could also get a google maybe you can get a motorola and if the accessibility is different doesn't that cause more confusion i mean if you're a person who goes blind you know last thing they want to figure out is what device do i need to get why can't you just tell me what device i should get that's a good question um uh, Shri, and also Foster uh, for mentioning that fact that, you know, on Android, and, and this is what really makes Android uh, different, and this is why I so, so, so much uh, love Android, because I don't want to use just a single thing. I, I was talking with a friend yesterday, and I'm like, uh, frankly, if I were on the iOS side of things, I probably would be bored to death, because uh, here's my reasoning. If I want to experience something different, I want a different feel of a phone. Um, you know, maybe I, I like, I prefer maybe the feel of a Samsung phone or a Sony phone or a Panasonic or something like that. But just to have one device, it's just so boring. I can't even begin to imagine. But in Android, of course, we have this thing called um you know, manufacturer's uh, preference. And so every manufacturer wants to show that this is coming from them. And as a result of that, uh, each manufacturer likes to put a little spin on it. And in Android, we refer to these things as, you know, skin. So uh, Samsung has its own UI. It used to be terrible. You know, the touch ways used to be terrible with Samsung. However, I do want to say that Samsung probably goes above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to um, dedication to accessibility. And I, frankly, I think a lot of things that we have, even on Google phones, uh, we kind of borrow those from Samsung and Samsung borrows some from Google as well. Uh, now, of course, like Foster said, if you're getting an Android phone, uh, you probably want to make sure you get the mainstream uh, Android phones. You don't want to get something uh, like maybe Doji. I got something from China a little while ago. And of course, um, <laughs> being the evangelist, I like to try different uh, uh, Android phones. And I, I get some phones from China and some will not even have your talk back built in, you know, try to enable accessibility and all it will say, uh, keep holding your fingers to enable accessibility and it never goes beyond that. And that's because they don't have talk back integrated into uh, the ROM of the, the OS of the phone. So yeah, it makes sense. If you're looking for a phone, they're probably, i say maybe on one hand or uh, maybe five or six main manufacturers that one maybe should be looking at, you know, Google, Samsung, Sony, uh, Nokia, Motorola, OnePlus. Um, of course, we don't have Xiaomi here. Of course, LG no longer exists. They're gone with the wind. But yeah, those are the manufacturers one should look look for when you're trying to get um, a phone because, yeah, it, it, it can be tricky if you get the wrong one. This is uh, Kevin. Um, I also wanted to say that it um, it's kind of like a popularity contest. And so Samsung kind of won. But the problem with that is that Samsung has phones in every price range. So what happens is that not only does the educator or the person that's helping uh, where I work, this happens all the time, but the person that's helping them the person set up calendar events and all this, all they know how to use is iOS and they really don't even know how to use voiceover, but it's still closer to what they have versus what Android is. And then the person. 
and then there's you know sitting beside someone in that same class that has a thousand dollar iphone and people say that it's the problem is android no it's not the problem is android it's the specs and so that's another misconception um but if we could educate people um to understand that if you want the same experience um i say pixel first even though i have samsung and google but i say pixel first because that's going to give you the same experience you're going to get the updates on day one you're going to get feature drops and every phone no matter if it costs three hundred dollars or if it costs about fifteen hundred dollars runs just as smooth and you're not going to have the hiccups you're not going to have the stalls and it's um it's you know it's day one and and, and google is very responsive to feedback um they've even changed uh it used to be only touch typing but now they've taken like a warren was saying borrowed from samsung so now you can double tap if you want to to enter your letters and numbers and so forth. So, um, you know, they will respond if if we if more people report, then they can respond and they can make differences and they can make changes. But I say uh, start steering people towards Pixel first, and um, you can't go wrong that way. Thank you for that, Kevin, and uh, welcome back. Uh, we haven't heard Kevin in a long time here. And uh, amazing thoughts here as far as what's said. Uh, and I, I definitely agree, it's especially uh, when I, I had called Ava yesterday just to let her know about the Pixel device here. And one thing that definitely was interesting about the Pixel device uh, as far as the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro it, it, it's called a tensor chip, which is an unbuilt chip that they have as well. Um, that for one feature that was interesting for me particularly was a dictation feature. So during the unveiling, the person dictated a message, but then they took a pause. And what we understand that iOS or any other device, Android device, the dictation should understand what our pauses are, but more than likely it does not. So sometimes we'll forget to say period after a sentence and then we might look silly when we send that and it's just a big old run on paragraph. But you meant well, you meant to say the right things. It's just that extra comma period, et cetera, uh, was not available. So uh, with tensor chips and stuff being on this new device, uh, speaking and translating, even if the person is speaking in Japanese as uh, Mary Kondo, I think her name is, uh, from the TV show on Netflix that uh, fixes your house up and cleans up stuff. Uh, she was talking in Japanese, whereas this other person was talking to her in English, but the translation was quite well. So again, as Kevin said, uh, g.co slash disability support. That's the link to remember, g.co slash disability support. And that is going to reach you to Google, especially. And you could reach them by phone, call, text, uh, not text, excuse me, uh, be my eyes, uh, email, which is, I guess, text, and then an actual phone call. Uh, if you use a be my eyes thing, you could use, they could see through your camera. So I use them for like a Nest thermostat to help uh, get it connected to my phone. Uh, they get to see your camera, so not your own device. So it's still a little... Uh, Difficult to see what's on your screen, but they may have tools to help that. So uh, be my eyes on that. Definitely a tool and a, a thing to look out. And uh, especially if you're trying to know, let's say, about a specific app or situation. Or Kevin just mentioned a few things that were really great. and Or you heard this name, Google Lookout. Or you heard Envision AI. Or you heard Leisure Reader, Leisure Scanner. These are all apps that you could download. But uh, Warren, lately I've noticed what he's been doing on his channel over on YouTube, has been doing segments on specific one app segments. So it's a little bite-sized edible uh, video. So blind Android users on YouTube. And then on Facebook, it, if you want to find me or Kevin or other people, um, I, I see Kevin on, on there. So sorry, Kevin, if 
you weren't trying to be found. But uh, if you go to iBug today on Facebook as a group, or if you go to blind and percent sign visually impaired Android users, uh, you typically will find us there too. Um, as far as uh, uh, you know, texting us or chatting with me specifically, I, I, I'll, I'm found there uh, easily than I am on our Android Insight list, but I do look at our Android Insight list and uh, try to get materials gathered for you. So um, late, earlier we heard uh, someone needing some materials for uh, uh, voice assistant and talk back. So uh, I have voice assistant written out myself, so I will get that sent over to you there, or if Ava could help me with that and uh, sent over that uh, attachment. And with TalkBack, uh, I'm gonna write up some more information. The things are, everything is so volatile and changing. So I think this month, next month, everything is finally gonna settle in and we're gonna enjoy kind of the holidays and we could actually use what we get as far as all these new toys out there. So, you know, according to Android 12, um, not much has changed as usability. Um, it's more for pixels right now. OnePlus did pick it up uh, a while back. So upcoming uh, things to look out for if you've matched those devices. Uh, Android 11, I think, still works just as well. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with Android 10 on my Note 9. So if you have older devices, does not mean that your phone stops working any lesser. I still get security updates. Um, so uh, if, if you have guys have more questions, concerns, let me know. And then if Ava maybe also wanted to think about showing that shortcut way of setting up a speaker and if Sandhya might have found her Pixel 5, uh, maybe she could uh, at least start up the process of uh, upgrading to from Android 11 to Android 12. So. There's something, hi, there's something that it, uh, Kevin said that I think is of great importance and that's uh, pricing. Um, we do have those, what we call those mid-rangers on Android. And so you think of them like your SE um, a series on Apple side of things. And those are great devices to go for. You, you can't go wrong uh, with the 300 plus device, uh, 300 plus dollar device, or um, like my recent Pixel 5a I picked up for uh, four hundred fifty dollars. Actually, I even prefer that over the seven hundred dollar uh, uh, Pixel Five. And, and so, great things like that. And especially when you mention Samsung, Kevin, uh, Samsung has all kinds of phones there in the mid-range area. And the good news here is that those devices also have the uh, UI. You know, three dot x and things like that so you're having that same experience that you have if you are having a samsung galaxy s20 or s21 and the same thing if you're having like a uh, pixel uh, 5 or pixel 4 as to having a pixel 3a series or 4a series so great uh, thing there to, uh, to keep in mind that one does not need to spend a lot of money to get a good experience Thanks, Warren. And uh, yeah, I agree. And, you know, with Samsung's other one key point that I was saying earlier is remember, A series good, S series good, J series not so good. Um, M series are sold internationally. So there is that if you have international friends, M series, I think is the equivalent of the A series. But I can't, uh, you know, I can't say for sure. And um, so A71, A72. A52, A51, uh, good devices comparable to something like a Note 9, S9, or uh, S20, S21. Uh, and then you have your folds and your flips, which are your off-branded phones, which I don't know specifically on accessibility, but I would presume if it's using One UI, most stuff should be accessible because both companies are definitely determining you know, their, their processes on uh, using accessibility uh, usage case scenarios first versus just saying, let's make a product and then try to fix it. So any more questions, concerns, guys? This is Shree. Carry on, Shree. So do you know, is there a resource that we 
that someone can go to to get the kind of things that you guys are talking about i think it's very valuable like to be able to say if somebody wants an android i can tell them go to this website because it's going to tell you you know for accessibility these are the models that that, that would work best for you this is uh, kevin go ahead kevin. um there's not really a resource um every phone to some extent that running on Android has accessibility built in and it works. It's just that some phones, um, the skin doesn't get in the way and you don't have to make as many modifications. But when you've been with Android as long as I have, I can take almost any phone and Google-fy it or whatever and make it more um, user friendly. But these other phones are just, I mean, I guess someone should develop sort of a resource. Um, I have an internal doc document that I use at work um, because there's so many uninformed people. But um, if, just, if, if nothing else, just Google Samsung, Google, Samsung, and then they can just, <laughs> and that's just safe. Probably Nokia, but it's, it just have to have enough RAM. But otherwise, I mean, everything works to some, to, to some extent. This is Shri. Go ahead, um, Shri. The reason I'm asking this question is, um, it, it, you know, it, I, I know for some people, this is a very easy answer to give. But, you know, when, when, when you deal with an older community, like I mostly deal with, you know, they're, they're in the 70 plus, I can't, you know, just say, go search it because they're asking us to give them advice. And, and unfortunately, you know, I don't have a resource to tell them, you know, this, this particular phone will fit, um, you know, fit, fit your need is because, because I really don't know. Uh, you know, I know Shri. that Samsung does this. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, Shri, to, to, to kind of talk to that point, though, um, I, I get where we're all coming from because that is the whole reason I think that Android even got lost in translation uh, as, far, as far as accessibility goes. Um, you know, it makes me wonder why did Ira choose the J7 as a product when they made the Ira product? Was it just because of a camera and the cheapness of it, right? So with this resource part, I think this is mostly us as a community saying that, hey, I found greater uh, ex feedback or positive feedback off of one or the other. Um, I know Warren with the blind Android users. I mean, I the, he Warren did a podcast ages ago. That's where I heard his voice first. And he had a weird voice. Um, not quite, but he had an accent. And so, uh, you know, him and I got uh, talking about some devices and right now blind android users was born it's about to be a year old but i found that it's people bringing their their stuff to the table so i've heard on his stuff on his podcast mostly people from like europe more than i have heard people from america and i think that's the thing that we need to do here is we need to see and try or give you know choice a a okay or give give it an a, a exception to give something a try versus saying well this thing is already accessible so that's the best device for you um and this is why it's hard as to write up a resource because screen sizes differ and manufacturing differs if you have a low vision i wouldn't mind saying samsung is a hands down the best for low vision but this time around google figured out hey they're doing better in that department. We need to do something better. So Android 12 has focused on low vision stuff like to make the time or the clock look bigger. Yes, that stuff is minuscule for the totally blind, but I think what's happening right now as far as a document is being written and that's us, the consumer, um, Motorola LG left the market and it, it makes us wonder why in the world couldn't I have pushed it? And you know, someone like Steve here that has a stylus and it's a 2021 model, 
it's a good phone. It's a, it has probably the hardware in it, eight gigs of RAM, probably, uh, you know, your 750, 730 processor, 128 gigs of RAM. You get stuck by the, the, the labels when you read that stuff at Best Buy. And that's why with the reading or documentation, I think what this is, is the human documentation of people that have said, I've had a greater experience with Samsung devices, or you know what, Samsung finally listened to me and fixed my problem that I've been complaining about. And I had a question earlier for Warren before it slips my mind, if, I, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna drop it, is for color inversion, uh, does the shortcut on Android 12 work the same way as Android 11, if anybody knows or has tried it, because it just kind of came about, I wanted to ask it earlier, is so you do a gesture, which I used to do swipe right and down, that means that is called the accessibility shortcut gesture. It says it itself, and in a gesture set, you could then set that to color inversion, turn on and off talkback, or do whatever you want to do that turns on that shortcut or accessibility feature. So um, has that, uh, is that still there in Android 12? So my question for tonight. That is still there, and like I said earlier on, though, uh, the beauty, though, is that actually you could use that accessibility shortcut and and if you have more than... Hang on, let me... That's my phone, let me... Oh, no, that's actually my wife's phone. Sorry. So, <laughs> um, it, it just... You need to... One needs to uh, actually... If you have just one accessibility need that you need, you could just assign a gesture to it. And it, it does not preclude, even if you don't uh, want to use the accessibility shortcut um, to quickly get that um, thing to come up, though you could still assign a gesture to it. But I think that sometimes people have difficulty uh, with those gestures on Android, you know, people make reference to them as being Angular uh, gestures. Uh, well, the good thing, though, is that nowadays you could use uh, tabs if you prefer, you know, uh, beating up your phone. I call it beating up my phone. If you prefer, you know, tapping on your phone, whether you want to use a four-finger tap or whatever tabs you want, you could assign those gestures to um, that action or that feature that we're talking about so it's a good thing we're not as limited as we were uh comparing to some years back so it's a nice thing now that we have especially with those uh, uh multi-finger gestures in t tapping and all the tabs i use some of those tabs myself like i utilize the four finger tap to uh, mute and unmute my talk back Thank you for that, Warren. And, uh, you know, as Sri was saying, do you guys have anything written up over at, uh, over at where you guys do? So what we, we're trying to do at Blind Android Users is we're creating, we want to be like what you guys uh, call the Apple Vs on the uh, iOS side of things, is that we, we want it to be more or less like a repository of uh, things, everything Android. And so we opened up a website for people where people could either post um, uh, guides and tutorials or even ask questions and then those questions would be answered there. I started a series on uh, on, on TalkBack that I called um, Highlights from TalkBack. And so uh, mainly I'm doing audio, although I started the written one. I could say though that written ones are harder to do than you know me just sitting back uh, kicking back and just talking and showing you how it works so um i think i'm up to 11th uh, the 11th installment and on the written side i probably only have one so go figure <laughs> well thank you for that warren I, I got a suggestion which i want to throw out there uh, if you open up the recorder app on a pixel device um and you play your 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 podcast or whatever you're listening to um, that thing is pretty sharp at picking up translations of the audio of the t and converting it into text. So um, I know that the new phone, the Pixel 6 with Tensor, that thing is going to be powerful, but um, this is 
a less powerful version if if anybody wanted to let's say uh do a recording in class or something you could go ahead and turn on recorder and then it at the end of the recording will ask you do you want to save it as mp3 or do you want to save it as both mp3 and a text file so that's a good you idea because you, you could convert I should it have, quickly i should have <laughs> thought of that myself because um it, it probably would have saved my bacon <laughs> yep. Well, uh, we'll leave it to more people questions. I know we are, we've been kind of taken up, but it's uh, definitely this a good is, discussion to have. This is Kevin. I Go just ahead, Kevin. wanted to say that um, I think that one resource um, to address Tree's question is to get a resource like that uh, for those who are aging and um, because there's so many solutions. Some people, it's going to be something like the blind shell. Some people, it's whatever latest jitterbug phone. Some people, it's going to be just a regular Android phone, but there's a, a home screen that you can download called Wise that's just for people that are aging and might have low vision or all the icons are big, or you can put like their three most called people on the home screen and stuff like that. So there's different solutions. Sometimes it's going to be an app. Sometimes it's going to be a specific phone. Screen size matters. So maybe if we could develop a set of questions and then someone could write up a response and then we could get a list of suggested phones or apps for different um, groups of people. Yeah, this is Foster. Go ahead, Foster. Yeah, no, I, I agree with Kevin and uh, I think, was it Warren that was speaking before him? Yep. Okay, what I was thinking is something that hit me is, you know, because each company kind of does, may do things a little different, they might add or take away from the skin. What would be nice is if you could get these manufacturers to say, uh, give you a loaner phone so you could go through and see how the accessibility works on that and then you know do like a, a youtube video slash write up and then develop a um like develop a catalog of different phones and how assess how the accessibility operates on them you know that would be a, that would be interesting yeah well, thanks for that foster i mean definitely a good idea sometimes it is harder than than said and done kind of thing. And that's been on my radar for a while to have like Samsung or Pixel, you know, uh, let us try it out or at least let it, let us show you guys as well. But I think with some of these devices is also, there's far too much to learn as, uh, as far as uh, breaking it down. But, um, you know, with the, with, with the, the list and the write up, uh, you know, if you guys wanted, like I said, do the iBug Android Insight plus subscribe at groups.io and send us a blank email. And then if you guys want to start up the discussion, then, you know, we could start um, building on top of that. And then I think that could expand into the blind Android users because it, we've all been asking, wanting, but, uh, you know, we just haven't had. And I know ACB with the community calls was always looking for a resource for people to suggest about Android and stuff. So, I think there's multitudes of resources. I think uh, we're definitely on the right track, but if we could all maybe even sign up or write in our thoughts, processes of what phones, you know, like you like better and why. Um, like I said, uh, Samsung is best for low vision users, but I my first suggestion would be a Pixel phone. As uh, Kevin said, all Pixel phones are going to be real similar and you'll get all of the benefits of the newest features in TalkBack or Google, Android, and um, flexibility with even third-party devices like the Nest Audio, Nest Mini, uh, Nest Hub Max, Nest uh, Gen 2, uh, Nest Hub 2. And uh, then I mean, uh, Ava hasn't even shared how many Alexa devices she has. Or, sorry, I already said her name. But I don't know how many devices she has. So let's see if she's awake over there. This is Shree. Go ahead, Shree. I was just going to suggest, um, this is kind of what I did with uh, iOS. Instead of uh, reinventing the wheel, I went to the Apple accessibility um, documentation, and I just took all the documentation and just put it into a 
uh, plain text. And then I started writing it as a blind person would use the app. Instead of, you know, what the sighted person wrote the documentation, I did it as a, a blind person as how the gestures would be performed to go from one task to the other task. So I was just wondering if, like, does Samsung have a documentation on TalkBack that you don't have to really reinvent the wheel, but just tweak it so there's less writing to be done? Or even yes. Google? That's what I use. Um, I take my documentation that I send students, I take it directly from the, um, whatever, from Google's website um, for when they added the Braille input, Braille screen input and all that. I just take their documentation uh, when we teach Google Docs and Sheets and everything. Uh, we're using Classroom now. I just take all of their documentation. And that's the thing I would say the pointers uh, as Kevin, sorry to, to kind of interrupt there, Kevin. And I would say Google support page is quite vast in that subject matter. So each product, each little thing has its own write up. So it's, it, I mean, I could say go to the Google support site, but where do you go on the Google support site? That could be a question that could be harder to determine for an individual, but Google.com slash accessibility will give you all the accessibility products that Google has. And uh, they might even have information to how to use those products on an iOS device, for example, or uh, Samsung might have their own write up in their own fashion. But uh, I know that for a fact that Google has quite a quite a bit of write up. It's sometimes hard to go through everything and and uh, decipher. So and there is the new book on National Braille Press that Anna wrote um, that you can get that's Android from a blindness perspective. Definitely I think recommend it's it. Android 11. And another, another good thing, though, is the, um, the TalkBack itself has some great tutorial. Uh, it's a great yes. resource that oftentimes people overlook, but frankly, it's a very good place to start if you really want to know what TalkBack is all about. Right there within TalkBack itself, that tutorial is awesome. And on the the, the newer TalkBacks, this is Hershey again, on the newer TalkBack versions, and uh, as I've noticed as of late, if you do find that section that says uh, the, the tutorial, TalkBack tutorial, there's actually a scratch pad. So we were talking about uh, angle gestures and some of the gestures and the swiping might feel difficult. I think that little area, and that's available on older devices with Android 10 too, I believe, or at least it's a, a scratch pad, so to speak. And uh, you could definitely get more acquainted with the way you would... Uh, you know, go ahead with uh, learning, let's say, angle gesture for talkback menu versus a swipe up and down and up for uh, granularity gestures. So good call there. Well, uh, I'm going to leave it open. We have about 10 more minutes, and uh, I'm going to leave it open for any more questions, concerns, or if you want to know something about something, uh, we could. We have about 10 minutes to do a quick uh, tutorial sh or show. Um, if Ava c wanted to quickly mention about her Amazon stuff as well, um, that could work out uh, for what shortcuts she did because she had to move all of these Echo devices into, uh, I don't know, she has a whole mess. She, she, was, she was trying to explain it too much to, to answer. But uh, And then if Sandia is available with her Pixel, uh, she could hit a couple of buttons for us if she has it and uh, hit the button to update to Android 12. So her Pixel, 12, uh, 4, or Pixel 5 will have Android 12, whereas our other founder, Mr. Michael McCulloch, has the Pixel 4a. So that's where the numbers got all. But carry on. Yes, well, this is Ava. I hope everybody can hear me. Sure can. Okay. Um, yeah, no, as her, she was saying, in my move, I'm having to um, <clears throat> transfer and reinstall, reset up all my Alexa devices. And from what I'm finding out, after setting up one and linking my internet, my Wi-Fi, 
to my Alexa app, anytime I plug in a new uh, device, whether it is my Echo Flex or the Echo Dot right now, um, it does, it, it will come up after about a few minutes and say, ready to set up, go to your app, follow the steps. And then within three minutes later, it's telling you it's gone through the setup part and has connected it to the Wi-Fi and to my app to where all you do now is just go on the app and I do the finishing setup as in changing the name of it, um, <clears throat> telling it what room, where it's located. But then I also have found out what is a nice feature now, rather than me have to dig through the app and figure out the device and to change the voice or even change the wake up name. Now on the Echo Flex, it will not allow you to change the wake up name on it. But on the Lady A, the dot, and it will allow you to do that. And all you do is say, if you have it named Lady A, just say Lady A, change the wake up name. And it will, she will come back and give you the choices. And then you choose the one you want and it will change it. As well as with the voice, it's the same way. Um, you just say, Lady A, change voice. And it will swap it over because you have the choice now of the female or a male's voice. This is Sandia. Yes, Sandia. So I was going to share one thing that I learned um, recently, just like two days ago. So I accidentally said the wrong wake word or something, but it doesn't matter. Like if I, I have a light near my piano. And so I said, a lady, you know, or I said, Amazon, turn on the piano light, but um it it they all work I, I guess mm -hmm. is the under I thought I don't know what I was thinking but anyway it was pretty exciting so <laughs> simple but I was like oh I don't need to worry about what I say you know so yeah. this is Shri yes yeah, Shri so Ava did you had did you get like a new router is that what you did or did you move to new yeah. house so Both. why didn't you just use the same SSID on your new router then you wouldn't have to change anything. No, I, I actually, I moved to a new house. I just bought uh -huh. my first house. Excellent, congratulations. Thank you. And I switched companies because I went from Comcast to AT&T for my internet. No, 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 what I'm saying is, you know, your Wi-Fi name, mm -hmm. let's just say, let's say it's Ava's home is your Wi-Fi name in yeah. your old house. In the new house, you could still call the Wi-Fi Ava's home and everything would have still just recognized it. I, um, I didn't do that because I was trying to change it to something totally different. I see. You know, to be different, but I just stuck with what they did for right now while I'm still in setup mode. Yeah. Yeah, because when I've swapped routers, I just use, keep using the same SSID. Mm -hmm. So all my Wi-Fi is just, they just connect to the same SSID name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, <clears throat> but that's one thing that is very good to know. So just know y'all, either way, just remember, change your SSID to the same one. Or once you, once you set it up on one, they will all connect. So we'll reconnect back. But um, yeah, but that's a good thing because I'm gonna have to, I want to go in and change my SSID later on after I finish getting the house set up. Great. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to, we have so many um, uh, routers in my house. Uh, at one time, I think we had four. And so I finally got read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of these things and I mean we still have so I just got like the mesh system we got the uh, Google mesh instead mm -hmm. so it comes like in a three pack I got a three pack and it's probably the best thing I got because um, you know 
our house is fairly large, and so we have it like in four different rooms. You know, we put this, um, uh, we put them upstairs and all of that. And so I'm sitting upstairs now and being able to do my podcasting uh, from upstairs versus uh, prior. I have to go downstairs because mm -hmm. the routers were down there. Um, but now with that mesh system, it's a good thing. And I think if one could find one, uh, there was one, I don't remember what it was called, but it was like for, it was giving the big guys a run for their moolah. I think mm -hmm. a four pack or three pack was like like $80. And frankly, if I mm -hmm. had not uh, purchased this uh, Google mesh system, I would have gone with that. Well, Warren, I thank you because I do have a two-story house. <laughs> yeah, that's what we have too. So, yeah, so yeah. that is something I'm going to be looking into. Yeah, you want a mesh system. Yeah. And because you don't want those weak spots um, when you, you, you know, you don't want to go downstairs all the time, you know. <laughs> mm -mm, no. <laughs> and I guarantee you, I don't run up and down the stairs. No, I yeah. wouldn't do that either. <laughs> so. Yeah, my next purchase will be my Chromecast Foster, <laughs> so that I'll have that one as well. So, but um, do we have any other questions or comments right now? Just this Foster, just real quick. Yeah. Maybe uh, next time we meet, um, I'm just curious as to how many people actually use the um, their cell phone, like say with their Windows PC. Um, I see that like uh, the your phone app on the on your mm -hmm. Windows PC. I'm just uh, curious as to how many people use that and what they think of it. And also um, with this Windows 11 that came out, which I haven't downloaded yet, has anybody tried to use the uh, Amazon App Store that it now is supposed to work on your Windows 11 uh, okay. operating system? So, Okay, well that'll be okay. that'll be two topics we will look at next month. This is Sonia. Yes, Sonia. Yes, well that's important to know because right now Amazon is not working in the iOS world and I'm not very happy. So <laughs> my credit card's happy, but I'm not happy. <laughs> so so yeah. So you're saying it works on well, it's the new Windows. I don't have that yet either. So. Well, uh, what you're saying out of the iOS side, which my app, I checked it, it does still work. It's in a list you search for, let's say toilet paper and you have Charmin, you have Scott, <laughs> and you got paper. whatever. It has to be toilet um, paper. Yes. You, you, you know, <laughs> hey, hey, it's a, it's, it's a commodity. It's the pandemic. Page. Yeah, I know, I know. It's the shortage. Go ahead. Oh you, you, never, you never know. Yeah. But you should, you should be able to read the list of different products, but you can't. <laughs> Yeah, but, once you uh, click on an item, the whole thing crashes. But that's for another day. But yeah, two, so I'll two I'll more days. Two more days. Yeah, two more, two more days. days. They're gonna fix it in two more days. Oh, I heard it on your call, woman. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it must be true. It must be true. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I love but, it, guys. You know what? I love all you guys for you know get, lending us your ears tonight and uh, awesome discussion. And uh, again, uh, Warren, Sandia. That's Sandia. That's Warren. You guys could. Hi, Warren. Know, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, you, you guys could reach each other as far as you know if you guys want to do any kind of collabs. Otherwise, but good source. Warren has a bunch of stuff already done for us. So go check out Blind Android Users. Uh, our email to join our list: ibugtoday.com. Go to Android Insight. There you'll find a link that says ibug Android Insight plus subscribe at groups.io. So go ahead and, uh, you know, subscribe to our list. That way you could at least have your voice heard or have a communication mm -hmm. with us so we could trickle it down to Warren or trickle it down to iOS land or, you know, maybe Shri has an answer. So mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate all of you guys' time, you know, to, to, that you guys take to listen to us for uh, what we have. And uh, again, if you have other future questions, concerns, uh, you know where to find us on social media as far as Facebook mm -hmm. is concerned. Uh, my name is Harshid, really. So if you want to look for me, uh, I'll leave it at that. I'm a ghost. And uh, with that, <laughs> I thank you. Thank you, Ava. Thank you, Ava. Yeah, and just remember, our next uh, call is November 17th, third Wednesday. All right. Is that thank before you. Friday? Black getting Friday? Close, getting close <laughs> to Turkey Day. 
All right. Thank, uh, you. thank you for the turkey. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank hey, you, guys. I, hey, Shree, I would love for you to come back to Android. I'm, I'm vegan.